Chryslethon, also known as Airsoft Fatty, is someone with a lot of online infamy surrounding him. Chris lived a troubled life in Battle Creek, Michigan. He lost his father to illness as a child, leaving Chris to reduce his mother and the family house slowly began to fall into disrepair. When he was a teenager, Chris began to upload videos under the name Airsoft Fatty. He was just making videos about things he got up to around his property, such as showing off his Airsoft gun collection, engaging in lightsaber fights, and just general commentary of what he was getting up to. It's Saturday night. I can remember it so clearly. And we start getting intimate. We start making out. We start feeling each other. And she goes, Baby, do you have a condom? I was like, The f is a condom? And let's not forget the collaborations with Robert. I keep doing the vagina, to put it that way. Jesus. Oh, it's not a happy camera back then. You would have did that to my wife. I would have came to school. You would. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this Jedi Council meeting has gone from being fucking serious to trying to make this f right here to talking about kidding, hitting a girl in the gooch. Yeah. Ah! Ah! You're still hitting full force, dude! Chris's video started to gain some traction after a few years, and Chris quickly became a meme as a result of his content. S off Fatty videos were very low quality, but people seemed to be interested in him as a person. Fatty caught the attention of popular YouTuber iDubs, who had been looking to branch out of his content. He decided to go and visit Fatty and put together a documentary showcasing his life, which revealed the poor state that Chris was living in. Hill, especially after father passed away, we didn't have funds to sit there and just get every major repair we needed, so... It looks very ugly right now. We're just now getting to a point where we can afford to get the downstairs ceiling done. It takes a few months for us just to save up for a small repair like that. The documentary propelled Chris to a new audience, and even people who hadn't seen the documentary or had any prior knowledge of him were still seeing memes of him everywhere. If you walk upstairs, you'll find the lounge, which is the most popular place on the estate to enjoy some me time. However, the celebration of Fatty's newfound stardom was cut short. Shortly after the documentary was released, Fatty's mum passed away and the house was abandoned. Chris ended up staying with multiple different people throughout the years, but seemed extremely difficult to live with and struggled to find permanent housing. He ended up being taken advantage by someone who had taken a management role over the Airsoft Fatty brand. The manager was named Josh and worked for a weed dispensary that Fatty frequented. I met Chris uh, probably like two or three years ago at a car meet. We did some videos um, and then like we stopped talking for a little while, started working together again. Um, I, Chris came into like a dispensary that I worked at and uh, he just wasn't in the best shape and stuff. Like I, I was like, I got to help you, dude. Like there, you shouldn't be in this position, like given the tools that you have. So we just use those tools to get him out of that. A YouTube channel named YouTubers you two, I don't know how the fuck to say that, documented the in-depth troubles that Airsoft Fatty had with his former manager, so if you're interested in learning more about it, I highly suggest checking it out. The summary is basically that Airsoft Fatty had been manipulated and used for Josh's own personal game. He was pretty much in complete control of Chris. Chris finally got rid of Josh and the Airsoft Fatty channel began to fall into obscurity after this saga. Chris reunited with iDubs at the Creator Clash event and performed the pre-match national anthem. So proudly we as the twilight's last we oh. oh, I got nervous. Sorry, I got nervous, people, my bad. Let's just do this. Let's fucking do it. Ready? Let's give it another try. Let's go. Oh, say can you see? So proudly we stand While the dark times me the dark red light strikes Through the perilous flight For so proudly we have 
Chris managed to find himself a place and consistently streamed on YouTube, however his financial situation got worse and worse. I have literally three bucks to my name. I don't talk about this much. When I come on, I'm like, hey guys, like, could you smell with munchies or something? Like, I got lucky I still had a little two packs of ramen left and a little bit of honey. Because literally otherwise I'd be eating peanut butter right now. That's not a joke. I don't joke around when I talk about being low. I want to fucking break down and cry and scream. But I know it doesn't do anything anymore. Charles also got personal information and started harassing his landlord. As a result of this, Chris would have wild freakouts on stream, which only fueled the trolls more. I have to keep bringing up the cannabis! Guess what, mother I haven't had to buy cannabis in six months! Jesus Christ! Idubs had also apparently sent Airsoft Fatty $800 to pay for his rent, even though Airsoft Fatty said that Idubs didn't give a shit about him. And he never fucking replied! You wanna talk about some shit? I messaged Idubs the other day. I said, hey, could you just share my stream around? I didn't ask him for money or anything. I said, hey, share my stream around. I looked at the message and never fucking replied. Chris was eventually faced with eviction from his place and needed to sort out other living arrangements. Sam Hyde and his crew came across Fatty's situations and organized to have him stay in the fish tank house. A 24-7 reality show with a house that is on constant livestream for anyone to tune into. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey. Well, my name is uh, Christopher Michael Lafon. I'm a 26-year-old man, and my stage name's Airsoft Fatty, a name I'm quite proud of. Are we ready to make some art? Yep. This led to some of the greatest Airsoft Fatty content of all time. So where the f is it? Because that's one expensive ass bag, and that's every piece of clothing I f got. Y'all wanna see me, dude? We'll be dude. Y'all wanna be dude? We'll be dude. And the contract rules are made to be broken. Exactly. Where the f is the bag? No one's sleeping tonight. We'll be fine. Well, start looking for it then. Why don't you drunkies do it? Why the f are we looking for your? What is your so better than start looking for it and shut the f up? Also appeared to be under some new management. The people of the Airsoft Fatty subreddit had been able to obtain some information on Chris's new manager Blaze, and found that he had a long list of criminal charges. The charges can best be related in this Kiwi Tapes video. But when I got a look at the rap sheet that his manager slash landlord has, it explains a lot. Domestic Violence Assault 2016. Domestic Violence Battery 2011. Battery Touch or Strike 2011. Simple Trespass 2011. Third Degree Assault 
2010, another domestic violence assault date not specified, and another criminal charge that I'm assuming took place so long ago that it's been scrubbed from the record. Blaze also grows marijuana for a living, but it also appears they do not have proper licensing to do this. While Chris was on Fish Tank, a GoFundMe was created to assist Chris in building a tiny home, so he had a place where after Fish Tank was over. The GoFundMe hit the goal of $25,000, and Fatty was able to construct his tiny home with a brand new influx of fans from the Fish Tank series. We got my buddy uh, Robert here chilling right now. Shut the fuck up, I'm trying to sleep. That being said, come on in, come on in. This right here is where all my R&R happens. That rest and relaxation. Sometimes it entails a simple little 20 minute weed nap. Sometimes it entails a little jerkins and a little good time. And sometimes it's just about getting to sleep on time. The airsoft fatty management wasted no time in getting Chris to make more content. Some concern began to grow online for Chris and the location of his tiny home as it was in such a remote area and needed regular maintenance, something Chris had struggled with in the past. Something else was also odd. SR Fatty's GoFundMe had been long over, but for some reason it was still receiving large donations of thousands of dollars from an anonymous benefactor regularly. Now, there's of course the possibility that Chris just has an anonymous benefactor that sends him thousands of dollars every so often, but it seems as though there might be something else going on. As we mentioned earlier, Chris's manager Blaze was growing marijuana without a license, meaning he probably needed a way to clean the profits of that. So the people of the Airsoft Fatty subreddit began to connect the dots, and the allegation was soon made that the Airsoft Fatty Victory Fund was being used to launder money. Now of course, this is all theory and allegation, but I think the dots connect enough for this to be the case. The Airsoft Fatty subreddit was banned, although it speculated that this was somehow done by Blaze. Something else strange also happened. Chris claimed his YouTube channel had been stolen from him. A live stream is then started where a distressed Chris claims that he's not feel safe and he's live in case something happens. The stream then mysteriously cuts off. Not feeling super safe right now, so I'm kind of just going live to make sure something happens. Uh, they did this in he's witnessed. Uh, uh, I, um, yeah. I, um, yeah, yeah, Am I okay? No, I'm not. I, I, I really don't know if I'm okay, okay? I'm just literally really terrified right now. I, I don't. YouTuber Kiwi Tapes was one of the biggest channels who covered these allegations. As a result of this, SR Fatty Management sent Kiwi a false copyright strike on his channel and began trying to hide any chatter of these allegations online, and continued on with Chris's content as usual. Anyone who tried to draw attention to the shadiness behind SR Fatty's management were quickly silenced. I myself, for example, did a live stream talking about these allegations months ago. I guess Blaze or Chris himself stumbled across my stream as for some reason I was blocked from the SR Fatty Instagram. The GoFundMe to this day is still receiving large anonymous donations of $4,000, with no explanation of where this money is coming from. Now, this has all been alleged, but I do think there is something strange going on with the airsoft fatty management. It definitely appears that he's being taken advantage by this person, Blaze. And whether he's actually laundering money is unproven, but there's definitely some good evidence to suggest that he is. Chris is someone who struggles mentally and is incapable of caring for himself. This makes him an easy target for people to get involved in his life and make a quick buck off his infamy. As much as I enjoyed seeing Fatty on Fish Tank, it definitely feels like while watching the episode is that he was only there because he had no other place to go, and the content involving him was usually at his own expense. Interestingly enough though, Chris has said that he will not be appearing in Season 2 of Fish Tank, but the reasoning for this is unclear. I like Chris, but whatever situation he is in isn't good for him, and whether he's being used to launder money aside, it appears he's definitely being taken advantage of at the very least. My name's been Stonic10. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If I get any more information, I'll be sure to update you all. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for now. See you later.